Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the Pigments Drum Week. Today we're talking about symbols, crashes, and all that kind of stuff, and how we can easily change a few parameters to make a big crash, a splash, or something like that. So uh, without, with that being said, here is the track that we've been listening to this week, and uh, keep an eye out for the crashes. I want to think you get the idea, but what you're actually hearing is two different crashes. I have one here called crash symbol low, which is on the left hand side a little bit at about 36% to the left side. And we also have crash right, which is uh, about 36, 33, something like that percent to the right, but it's a little bit different tone. So take a listen to the high one. And then let's take a listen to the left one. So it's slightly different. Okay, so let's get into this here. So let's take a look at this low one here and see what's all happening here. So inside the synth page, this is gonna be a little bit different from the other three videos that we covered for filter routing. This filter routing is gonna be on sum. So, so filter number one is gonna feed its signal from, from the output to filter number two. So with that being said, we're really only using engine number one analog. Don't worry about the utility engine that's on my default. We can always click that off, that's fine. But we're really just using one analog engine. So what's happening here, we have oscillator number one at a, as a sine wave, number two is as a sine wave, and number three is a sine wave. Number three is going to be frequency modulating number one and two. Now keep in mind that the second one's volume is down, so if you do want to use it, just make sure to bring the volume up. But for right now, the, the first one is just fine. And we're also using this in conjunction with a little bit of noise on the white noise setting here. So the volume is at negative 8.89. And we're also adding full voices of unison at 8, and then the detune at 100%, and stereo at 50.8. So that initially gives us this type of metallic -y sound. Now, so let's, uh, let's bring this back here to the center and kind of focus on, because it can be a little confusing if it's panned a certain direction, and let's mute our reverb because that can also be distracting. So this kind of metallic-y sound, so how, how are we wanting to get this, right? And I made this one with a more so a shorter decay for, for overall because I didn't want it to kind of linger around too long, but that's something that's very easy to change if you want to have a longer decay for your, for your crashes. So this is the main sound generation, and then this is getting fed into the first filter, which is an MS-20 on a high pass 6 right here. So the resonance is increased by 0.148, and there's a small amount of modulation, as you can see, happening here. Now it's going very slow, and it's only on a one-shot mode right over here. So once we play it once, it's going to go through. It gets triggered every time we hit a note. Now what's happening here is this is hitting the, imagine the stick hitting the actual crash, and then we're moving the cutoff slowly to kind of let the frequencies decay at different times. So the opposite is also true with the next filter. So the output of the first one is going then into the second, and we're doing something kind of opposite, but this time we're using the SEM filter. As you can see, this is a little bit more heavier modulation with function number two. So before we get there, function number one is moving at a rate of 0 0.069 hertz, and function number two is moving at a rate of 1.23 hertz. Now keep in mind, these should be hertz because if we have these in, in BPM or some type of synced thing, if we change the tempo of our track, then it's gonna change all of these functions to whatever tempo you change to, and it's gonna drastically change that sound. So that's why these are always in hertz, always remember that. Now here for this second filter, we're using function number two and there's a slight change here. On this second line here, we have a node and it's kind of dragged down just a little bit and then it kind of goes linear from there. So what happens is we hit, the stick hits the uh, the symbol and then we kind of want to simulate those higher end frequencies decaying over time. And then it fades out. And for this, there's no resonance on this here. And if you look at our mode, it's 100% low pass. So that's pretty much it for the crash. It's not too difficult, but it's something to keep in mind. We do want to talk about this contour here, though. Envelope number two. So let's go to our envelopes and look at number two. So the attack is going to be at one millisecond. The decay is 2.83 seconds. Sustain zero. Release default 100. Doesn't really matter because the sustain is zero. Now, the decay curve is more so linear for this one, 0 0.080. 
Now, if you want your, your symbols to ring out much longer, reach for the decay knob and the decay curve, and that's gonna be how you're gonna fit that to your track. So moving on from there, let's go to our effects and see kind of what's happening. So a lot of this is different types of sculpting, right? So let's turn off FXB and let's go to FXA and kind of go through these individually here. So let's turn these off. So the first thing, this is what we would hear just organically from the oscillators through the filters. It's like, okay, we have this type of sound, this kind of metallic-y sound with our contours, right? Now we need to add a filter and this one's kind of more so just to cut off the really low stuff. We can change this if we want more of a beefier, uh, beefier symbol or something like that. This is the one you'd want to change because this happens after both, uh, after the sound and the filters. And this cutoff right here is at 197. Like I said, if you want it more beefier, more low endy, then reach for this knob over here. Next up, we have a multi-filter. Now this notch is very important here. So this is a notch, a 36 dB slope. The cutoff is gonna start, at, or it's gonna finish at 1,025 uh, 1, Hertz. And it's gonna be modulated slightly by function number two at 0 0.12. And also the Q is gonna be 0 0.867. And this dry wet knob is not all the way in the mix. So there's a little bit of leakage, if you will, in the signal here. Because we want a little bit of notch, but we don't want it completely removed here. From then, we go into a distortion on a soft clip. And this kind of almost smooths out the sound a little bit, still retains the metallic vibe, but also, yeah, smooths it out. Take a listen without it. Now with it. Now this dry wet knob is going to be 50%, so kind of a parallel type of function here. And the drive is at 35.7 dB. Next for FXB, we're going to do some more filtering. So we have another filter here, and this is a comb filter here. And this is also getting modulated by function number two. So let's turn off the compressor and the second multi-filter, technically the third. Now, this one here, this comb feed, uh, feedback, comb filter feedback. And the frequency is 20, or this, button, this knob here, 29.1, slightly modulated by function number two. It's a slight change, but if we exaggerated this maybe to, so let's increase this Q quite a bit here, something like that. That's kind of what we're adding there, but at a very small value, so it's changing it, but it's not super apparent. It's always just tiny little screws that make everything kind of nice. Next, we have multi-filter. If we turn this on here. This is kind of just moving the frequencies a little bit here. If we look at our cutoff, it's at about 7.7K, and it's also getting moved by function number two. So function number two is doing quite a bit here. It's going to be on bandpass and a slope of 12 dB. Q is 0 0.707, and the dry wet is at 54. And finally, we want to compress it. So these settings are always kind of arbitrary depending on how loud your signal is, how quiet it is, so on and so forth. But for this specifically, the threshold is at negative 15.5, ratio 3.30 over one, and the output is at zero, didn't change anything here, but we did have the makeup gain selected here. And then the attack, two milliseconds, release is at 50. And it's really a little bit of compression here. It's really not that much. Now we go to the final stop. So we have our auxiliary send here and we have the send all the way to the top at zero, our return also at zero. And this is where we have this reverb. And I kind of played around with a lot of different settings and I say this pre preset here for the reverb, which is really cool that you can do in pigments. You can save presets within the different effects modules. That's very awesome. So this one I called the crash verb, John Audio crash verb. And it kind of helps the, uh, the, the release phase kind of be a little bit more accentuated. And remember, we can always make a cool sounding, uh, cool sounding symbol or a crash by itself. And we have a long decay, a long reverb tail at the very end. But don't forget that your crash is part of a track that's part of a drum kit that's part of a whole thing. So keep in mind, it does have to play nicely with others. So you might want to always alter the, uh, the envelopes or your decay times, your reverb tails, so it doesn't clutter up your track. So that's why this one might sound a little bit short in the, if you, you know, if you just have a cymbal and you just hit it with a drumstick in an open room, it's going to ring out for a long time. But if it's in a track, you kind of want to control that. And since we have the ability to do that, it's kind of nice that we can. 
which is what's nice about synthesizing your own stuff because you can make it very specific to whatever it is you're working on. Now for this one, uh, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. One last thing I did want to talk to you about is tuning these different things. So I had this crash, this first one here on the left-hand side, about 36 or so, something percent like that. Now, let's say you want the different sound. So we have this crash right. We can tell that the one on the left is a little bit lower pitch and the one on the right is higher pitch. So here's the left side. Here's the right side. So it's a very easy change. So once we open up this crash symbol high, all we have to do is in our analog engine, just increase your course tuning to whatever tonality that you would like. And that's pretty much how you would change the different pitches of that. Now, if you want to change different kinds of filter sounds, that's where you go for the cutoffs here and kind of sculpt it from there. Also in the effects here, like this, uh, this band pass right here, you can always change where this frequency sits over here on the cutoff. So those cutoffs are kind of more the tonality of the sound. And then the course, the course pitch right here is more so the course pitch of the actual symbol. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, if you have any more questions about any of these kicks or snares or hats or or symbols or anything like that, please let me know. I'll do my best to answer those and to play us out. Let's play us out with our song we've been listening to all week. Hopefully we're all not sick of it by then. So yeah, if you want to get this preset for free, it's in the video description below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Have a good day.